If you're experiencing any type of hair loss, then minoxidil may be for you. It's not just for men. Trust me, women can use it too. And in this video, we're gonna talk all about minoxidil, how to use it, and how to get the best results. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and hair and nails and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And just before we get started, I wanna be really clear, this is not personal medical advice. If you ever have questions, you should consult with your own healthcare provider. Aside from consulting with your primary care physician before you start on something like minoxidil, I also think it's really important to see a dermatologist to ensure that the type of hair loss that you have will be responsible responsive to minoxidil. Because minoxidil tends to be a lifelong treatment, you don't want to be using it forever if it's not going to work for you. So topical minoxidil is an over-the-counter medication and it is the only FDA approved topical medication for the treatment of androgenetic hair loss, also known as male pattern or female pattern hair loss. Sometimes people haven't heard of minoxidil, but they have heard of Rogaine. And Rogaine is just the original brand name for minoxidil, but now it's available generically as minoxidil. And although I mentioned that minoxidil is FDA approved for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia, we as dermatologists will often recommend it for people with other types of hair loss, including things like alopecia areata, telogen effluvium, and some types of scarring hair loss, such as lichen plano pilaris, as well as frontal fibrosing alopecia. Aside from being available in topical forms, which I should mention, you can get over the counter at a drugstore, for example, it also comes as an oral prescription medication and can also be used to treat hair loss that way. But in this video, we're really going to focus on topical minoxidil. Of course, if you have questions about oral minoxidil, let me know in the comments and maybe we can do a video on that too. So minoxidil didn't actually start as a hair growth medication. It was actually used principally as a high blood pressure medication. And one of the side effects of people taking that medication was increased hair growth. So it was sort of discovered accidentally. It's still used orally as a high blood pressure medication, but usually in much higher doses than what we would use for hair loss. A lot of patients are wondering, are they a good candidate for minoxidil? And what I tell my patients is if you're experiencing pretty much any type of hair loss or shedding, you're a good candidate. A lot of times with hair loss, people wait until it's too late before they start interventions. And what studies have consistently shown over and over and over again is that you respond much better to hair growth interventions when you have more of your hair. So if you're even thinking that you might be shedding or balding, start now. So patients can find minoxidil at their drugstore. You can buy it online. You can even get it at Costco nowadays. And it comes as two main forms. First of all, it comes in two strengths, 2% and 5%. And then it comes as a topical solution, which is applied through a dropper bottle mechanism, as well as a foam. It also used to come and sometimes is occasionally labeled as Rogaine or Minoxidil for men versus Rogaine or Minoxidil for women. And in reality, they're the exact same. So if one is cheaper or more affordable, go with that one. So even though there are two strengths of Minoxidil available, I solely recommend using the 5%. In clinical studies, the 5% is much more effective. So why not go with the thing that's going to give you more efficacy? The other thing you may notice is if you read the label on a minoxidil bottle, it will tell you to use it twice a day because that's how it was originally studied in the clinical trials. But we've also found that once a day use is plenty adequate. And I find that it really increases compliance with patients to have to use it just once a day. You can also get prescription strengths of topical minoxidil that are higher, for example, six or even 7%. Minoxidil can also be compounded with other topical hair growth stimulants, whether that's finasteride or spironolactone or even anti-inflammatories to make the use and application more effective and have fewer side effects. Sometimes patients will ask me which is better for them, the solution or the foam, and it really just has to do with you and your hair consistency and what you like to apply. The only issue I find with the solution is it often has something called propylene glycol, which is really meant to be in there to help the penetration, but for a lot of people, it will cause increased irritation. So if you have a sensitive scalp, you may wanna opt for the foam. Now, something that's really important to be aware of with any type of hair loss intervention is that once you start to do it, because hair loss is an ongoing thing that happens for the duration of the rest of your life, then you are committing to using something like this consistently over your lifetime to maintain the results. If you're using minoxidil and it's working really well for you, if you stop using minoxidil, you're going to lose the hair that it has helped you grow and maintain. And that usually happens over the course of three to four months. I feel like sometimes people think that by stopping the minoxidil, it induced new hair loss and that's not what's happening. It's just, you're losing that growth signal from the minoxidil. And so eventually that hair begins to shed. Speaking of shedding, there's something called the dread shed that can happen to people when they start minoxidil. And this is when 
you start the minoxidil, and then about one to two months later, you notice an increase in shedding. And that has to do with how minoxidil works in general. What it does is it shortens something called the telogen phase, which is the rest phase of your hairs. And normally a telogen phase can last for a few months, and when it shortens it down to a few weeks or even a few days, you'll notice an immediate intense shed. What I reassure my patients about though is if you experience this dread shed, it actually means you are responding to the minoxidil and there are better things to come. But because of this initial shed, I don't recommend starting minoxidil a month or two before a big event, like a wedding. Sometimes people realize a month or two before they want to be looking good that they want to start minoxidil, but that's not really how you should think of this medication. You should think of it as a long-term thing that you're going to use and something where you're going to see the best results six months to a year after you start it. Aside from shortening that telogen phase or the rest phase of your hair, minoxidil also works by lengthening the anagen phase or the growth phase of your hair. In addition to that, people find that with minoxidil, the hair shafts themselves will actually increase in diameter. So you get this impression of increased density, not only because you're growing new hair, but because the hairs you have are also thicker. Although we don't fully understand the mechanism of action or how minoxidil works, there are a few things that we are aware of. One, it's a vasodilator. So it's going to increase blood flow to the hair follicle. The positive effect of minoxidil is not actually due to minoxidil itself, but something that it gets converted into called minoxidil sulfate. And the enzyme responsible for for making this conversion is something called sulfotransferase. This enzyme lives in your hair follicles and in actuality, people have different amounts of it. So how responsive you personally are to minoxidil has to do with the enzyme levels. If you have high enzyme levels of this, minoxidil is going to work really well for you. But then there are people out there who are what we call minoxidil non-responders and it's likely because they have low levels of this enzyme. Something interesting to know is the efficacy of this enzyme is decreased by exposure to aspirin. So people who take low dose aspirin or aspirin intermittently may be less responsive to minoxidil minoxidil as well. It also appears that minoxidil only affects suboptimal hair follicles. So if you have normal growing hair, it's not going to make your hair suddenly grow thicker or better than its baseline. It's only gonna work on those tiny hairs or the hairs that are shedding. And keep in mind, it will take some time to know if you respond to minoxidil or not. We're really looking to see the earliest signs of improvement with minoxidil after three to six months of consistent use. And things you may notice are little baby hairs, so these short, fine hairs, especially around your frontal hairline, as well as thickening of the current hair that you have and reduction of scalp show. Even though topical minoxidil is very safe for use, I do recommend consulting with your personal physician before adding it into your routine. And of course, like any medication, it does have some side effects, so we should talk about those. By far and away, the most common side effect of minoxidil is dry or sticky hair. And that really has to do with the overall formula when you apply it to your scalp. Of course, some inadvertently is going to get on your hair and may affect your hairstyle. But this only happens as you apply it. It's going to rinse out. This is not causing any permanent changes to your hair like that. Some companies will also sell minoxidil as part of a kit accompanied by shampoo and conditioner. And that shampoo and conditioner typically isn't going to help you grow new hair the same way minoxidil is, but it will help you kind of combat some of those side effects. For example, the Virtue Flourish hair care line is really well known for doing this. And a lot of my patients really enjoy using this system. Another side effect that some people experience with topical minoxidil is scalp itching. Sometimes that's due to the vehicle that the minoxidil is in. So if it's in the solution, it might be a little bit more irritating and oftentimes we'll have you switch to the foam in that case. However, if you're liking your results from your minoxidil, but you just have this side effect of itch, your dermatologist can also prescribe a topical anti-inflammatory to help you better tolerate the medication. Along with that itch, some people might experience some flaking and some scaling, and that is also treated with a topical anti-inflammatory. And then something that I'm very clear to counsel my patients on, because especially women are super not thrilled about this potential side effect, and that is the ability to grow hair outside of your scalp, outside of where you've put this product. Typically, this is due to the product transferring, so oftentimes people will notice an increase in hair hair growth on the sides of their face or even on their forehead or near their eyebrows. And again, that is really just because the minoxidil that is there then transfers to your face, either because you don't wash your hands well after you use it, or you go to sleep right away and it rubs from your pillowcase back onto your face. And we'll talk about tips to minimize that. Even though it's estimated that less than 2% of topical minoxidil is absorbed systemically, some people will rarely experience more intense side effects, things like dizziness or headaches or heart palpitations or even low blood pressure. And that's due to systemic absorption. If that's happening to you, you should definitely stop the medication. So how do you apply minoxidil? Let's get really practical here in terms of what you should do. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you are applying it to a dry scalp and that your hair is dry. So that means if you shower, you're going to wanna blow dry your hair first before you apply the minoxidil. I know that's not always the easiest for people and that's not the most elegant way to necessarily apply the medication, but the risk with heat styling after you apply minoxidil is that that blow dryer air can deactivate the product. 
And number two, you really wanna make sure you're getting it on your scalp. So that usually involves parting your hair in multiple locations in order to have the best scalp exposure. Now, of course, if your hair is very thin and you feel like you can access your scalp without moving your hair out of the way, that works too. I always recommend following the instructions on the package, but I typically recommend applying about one milliliter of product. So that's about one dropper full if you're using the solution or about half a cap full of the foam. You also wanna let the minoxidil sit on your scalp for at least a few hours before you rinse it out. So for example, you don't wanna put it on, let it sit and go work out because you might sweat it off right away. So I usually recommend to my patients to apply it before bedtime. And then this is the key, applying it an hour or two before bedtime, because if the minoxidil hasn't fully dried and you lay down to go to bed, then it can transfer onto your pillowcase and is more likely to transfer onto other areas of skin where you don't want increased hair growth. Now, if you do happen to get a little bit of excess hair growth where you don't want it, whether that's on your temple or on your cheek because you're using minoxidil, you can either take a one to two month break from the minoxidil that's not going to negate all of your results, or you can just be really careful about not getting it on that skin anymore. And over time, because that skin will not be getting stimulated, that hair will eventually go away. And then one thing to just be mindful of is that minoxidil is toxic to cats. Now, I don't think a lot of people have their cats going around and licking their scalp, but you do wanna wash your hands really well after you apply it, especially if you have a cat at home. And minoxidil doesn't have to be the only treatment that you're doing for hair loss. It combines very well with other hair growth interventions, such as low level laser therapy, as well as oral finasteride, as well as things like PRP injections. I know this won't apply to everyone, but you also don't want to apply minoxidil before you go and get your hair colored. So on the day that you're having your hair colored, don't apply minoxidil because it can change how the color takes to your hair. One of my friends was telling me about how her mom used topical minoxidil and then when she went to get her hair colored, it turned orange. And lastly, you don't wanna use minoxidil while you are trying to conceive, while you're pregnant or while you're breastfeeding. Even though I mentioned how topical minoxidil is only very slightly absorbed into our system, there is some risk of causing birth defects. And so we just don't wanna take any chances here. Topical minoxidil can also get into breast milk and subsequently transfer to a baby. And since we don't know how that would affect an infant, we just recommend staying away from it during this time in your life. Luckily, there's been a lot of research into other hair growth topicals that are safe while trying to conceive, while pregnant, and also while breastfeeding. So I always recommend that for my patients who are at that point in their life, they use those and then switch over to minoxidil once they're out of their childbearing years. Have you used minoxidil for your hair before? Are you thinking about trying it? Tell me in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.